Hello, welcome to Higher Ground Gaming. This is Eric. He's trying to bribe Mr. Brody there to get in his co-host seat. <laughs> Mr. Brody's back from his vacation with Purple Monkey over at my friend Joe's house. Yeah, he, uh, he's got a new friend. His little baby Charlotte is, is Brody's newest friend there. Brody was teaching Charlotte how to walk a little bit. Uh, she was walking a little bit and uh, she would try to chase Brody a little bit and it would encourage her to walk a little bit and made her forget about walking. So, Mr. Brody there teaching the young children how to walk. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is it's been a little while since we've done a game. This is game number 158. Only five games left in this series, in the season. Uh, the Red Sox currently still two games out of first. Um, Yankees are playing the Blue Jays and Milwaukee is also I'm not sure who they're playing. I think Cleveland. I'm not sure though. Um, but they're playing also. Milwaukee's almost out of it right now. Uh, I think they're a little, I'm not sure exactly how far they are behind the Red Sox, but I know they're a little bit behind. Um, but anyway, uh, so we'll see if the Red Sox can continue. They've won five games in a row. That's so all they can do is control their own destiny. I mean, control their own winning. So we'll see if we can, uh, get another victory here and hopefully a Yankee loss and get a little closer. So without further ado, it's going to be Milt Wilcox on the hill for the Detroit Tigers against Luis Tiant for the Boston Red Sox. And this is a game from September 27th of 1978. So without further ado, let's play some ball. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. So Luis Tiant, El Tiante on the hill for the Red Sox here at Fenway Park against the Detroit Tigers. And I think we may have made a mistake there. I think we may have called Purple Monkey Purple Dinosaur again. But it is Purple Monkey. Just to let everybody know. If you're new to the channel, Purple Monkey is the co-host and Blue Duck is behind there too. Mr. Brody uh, didn't take the bait there. He, he did. We did bribe him with a couple of treats, but he... Uh, he walked right out after that, so we'll see if he comes back. Again, he's uh, exploring and uh, spending time with his poodle right now because he's been away for a few days. So he's back, back in the uh, back at the house, and let's get ready to this game going here. So for the Detroit Tigers, it's going to be Ron the floor the. Center fielder will lead it off, followed by Lou, Lou Whitaker, the second baseman. La Grande Orange, Rusty Staub, will be the DH today, hitting third. Jason Thompson will bat clean up and play first. Steve Kemp is the left fielder, hitting fifth. Milt May behind the plate, bat sixth, followed by... Oh, God, it's been a couple of days now. <laughs> we'll have to look it up. Tim Cochran, the right fielder, batting sixth. And batting eighth, Aurelio Rodriguez, the third baseman, and batting ninth, the shortstop, Alan Trammell. So the defense behind El Tiante is going to be a strength game left, Lynn in center, Rice in right. Evans still out again. Brohammer, Burleson, Remy, and Scott in the infield. Thankfully, Hobson again not in the field. Like we said, uh, I think uh, Zimmer started to see that the Red Sox 
we're going to have a chance that he had to take Hobson out of off at the hot, hot corner there. And Colin Fisk behind the plate. So before looks in for the okay Tion's stats here. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. He's thirteen and nine on the season. So his next, if he can get a win today, he'll break his record for nineteen, the actual season for nineteen seventy eight. He's got a three point three zero earn run average, which is pretty much spot on, just hundredth of a point off of that. 207 innings pitched. 187 hits allowed. He has allowed two more hits than he did on the actual season. 66 walks, nine more walks. But he does have seven more strikeouts. And he's surrendered so far three less home runs. So Ron LaFleur comes into the box. He's hitting 285 on the season with 15 homers, 70 runs bet in. Three more home runs and eight more RBIs. That's going to be off his two column. That's going to be a fly ball to his counterpart, Lynn in center. Drifts over it, under it, and makes the catch. So Lou Whitaker up now. Comes in hitting 301 with a homer and 44 runs batted in. It's going to be off of his two column. And he'll draw the walk. So a one-out base runner for the Tigers. Scott will hold him on. Rusty Staub up now comes in hitting 260 with 23 homers and 90 ribbies. His next home run will equal his total for the season. RBIs are quite a bit off. Hasn't had as many runs to drive in. His other stats are pretty close, though. They should be average a little bit down. So it's going to be off the five call of Tiant. That's going to be a pop-up to Remy at second. And that's an easy out for out number two. So Jason Thompson up now. Comes in hitting 308 with 28 homers and 98 runs bad in. Two more homers and RBIs than on the actual season. Browns this one to Remy at second over to Scott. And that'll do it for the Tigers in the first. So after one half, it's Detroit nothing. Boston coming up. Wilcox on the hill. Wilcox struggling. Mightily on the season. Excuse me, was only was thirteen and twelve on the actual season. Is five and nineteen? Yes, five and nineteen on the in the on the replay. So definitely a drastic change of events for for him as far as wins and losses go. ERA also too about one point, almost one point seven higher than in the actual season. 1.7 runs higher. 188 innings pitched. 190 hits allowed. 70 walks. And 125 strikeouts. And it surrendered 32 home runs. 10 more home runs than on the actual season. So I'm sure that was part of it too. So the defense behind Wilcox is going to be Kemp in left before in center Cochran in right. Rodriguez, Trammell, Whitaker, and Thompson in the infield. And May behind the plate. For the Red Sox, Rick Brosson, the shortstop, will bat first. Followed by Jerry Remy, the second baseman. Batting third in right field, Jim Rice. Batting cleanup, the captain, Kyle Yastrzemski. Pudge Fisk will hit fifth, be behind the plate. Freddie Lynn, the center fielder, bats sixth. Butch Hobson is the DH. Batting 7th, George Scott, the first baseman, hits 8th. And Jack Broham, the third baseman, will bat ninth. So Burleson comes in hitting 276 on the season with two homers and 45 runs batted in. This is the windup in the pitch by Wilcox. And that will be a call, uh, swing third strike. Swung out one in the dirt, as the rooster would quite often do. For out number 1. So Jerry Remy up now. He comes in hitting 289 with three homers and 42 runs batted in. Has homered in this, I believe, in this series. And that was a solo home run to lead off one of the games. So Remdog in the batter's box. Rodriguez and Thompson in on the grass. We'll get one in the wheelhouse here. 
and hits that one past Trammell into left field. So one on and one down for Jim Rice. Jim Rice with 48 home runs on the season now, two more than in the actual season, and only three RBIs behind. Hitting 310 with 48 homers and 136 ribbies. A home run here would pull him within the one RBI of the of his total for the season. So Wilcox looks in for the sign, looks at the runner. Remy dancing around over there. Here's the windup in the pitch. And it's going to be off the three column. And should have paid more attention to Rice as he walks him. So first and second with one down for the captain, Kali Stremski. Hitting 270 on the season with 16 homers and 75 runs batted in. His next home run will tie his total for the actual season. It's going to be off the one column. That's a fly ball to right. And get under just a bit. Cochran starts back, now comes in and catches the can of corn. As the runners hold. So two down now. For Carlton Fisk. Comes in hitting 287 with 17 homers and 78 runs bet in. Off the two column. That's going to be a ground ball to Rodriguez at third. Up with it. Over to Thompson. And I'll do it for the Red Sox in the first. So after one full no score. It'll be Kemp, May, and Cochran against T El Tiante here in the second. Kemp comes in hitting 266 on the season with 23 homers, 8 more than on the actual season, and 68 ribbies. It's going to be off his 3 call. And that will be a line out to Scott at first. For out number 1. Milt May up now. May comes in hitting 226 with 5 homers and 25 runs batted in. Pops this one up to Remy. Calls everyone off and makes the catch. So two up and two down for the Tigers here in the second. Brings up Cochran. Cochran hitting 317, 50 points higher than his actual average for the season with two homers and 36 runs batted in. It's off his three column. And that's a fly ball to right. Routine fly. Rice makes the catch to end the inning. So after one and a half, no score. It'll be Lynn, Hobson, and Scott if anybody gets on Brohammer for the Red Sox. Lynn comes in hitting 292, 27 home runs, 5 more than on the actual season, and 91 RBIs, 9 more than on the actual season. So he's had a productive season. It's going to be off the 3 call. And that is going to be a call third strike as Lynn cannot pull the trigger. So one down now for Hobson. Hobson hitting 272 with 16 homers and 65 runs batted in. His next home run will tie his total for the season. It's going to be off the six column. And sharp breaking ball. Swings over it for strike three. So Wilcox now with three Ks on the day. Let's take a look at some scores here. So Cleveland's slipping by Baltimore 2 nothing. Toronto, New York are scoreless. Milwaukee with the lead over California. That's who Milwaukee's playing. California. California's also battling the Kansas City for the division leads. Kansas City's magic number is real low right now. Seattle leads Kansas City, though, one nothing. So that's good news for the Angels. They can get the lead over Milwaukee and get the win. Minnesota in front of Texas, 3 to nothing, And here in Boston, no score. So two down in the base is empty for the Boomer. Comes in hitting 248 with 15 homers, 55 runs bat in. Three more home runs and one more RBI than on the actual season. And it's going to be off the five column. And this will be a pop up. Actually, a liner to right. Cochran there. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the second. So after two full, it's Boston nothing and Detroit nothing. Aurelio really, Rodriguez comes to the plate, hitting 249 with 10 homers, 34 runs bat in. Three more RBIs, three more home runs than on the actual season. Tiant looks in for the sign. Nods his head, corkscrew delivery. And it's going to be off the one column. And that's a liner to Burleson. 
Route number one. So that'll bring up Trammell. Trammell comes in hitting 266 with 29 runs bet in. And that's a fly ball to left. Stremski is there. Drifts over and makes the catch. So two outs in the base is empty for the top of the order of LaFleur. LaFleur flew out in his first at bat. And he'll fly out to Yastrzemski in this one to end the inning. So up to two and a half. No score still. Number nine hit up Brohammer lead it off for the Red Sox. Brohammer hitting 248 with 24 runs batted. Gets one to hit here though. Lines it right to Whitaker for out number one. So top of the order, the Rooster up now. Struck out in his first at bat. And gets a base hit just out of the reach of Whitaker. So one out single for Burleson. Thompson hauled him on. Then I'll bring up Remy. I think we're going to go a little hit and run here. Oh. And that one's going to go a long way. It's going to one hop the wall. The second thing I thought it was going to be a routine fly, but he does hit the double. Off the split there, and that'll bring home Burleson, who was on the on the run with the crack of the bat, and he'll score all the way from first. So, Red Sox on the board on the Jerry Remy RBI double. So Rice up now walked in his first at bat. Couldn't get a hold of one here. This one's going a long way. Deep, deep to left field. And did he get enough of it? At the wall. And it's a home run. So Jim Rice with a two-run homer is 49th of the season. So he can hit that 50 homer mark. Now just one RBI short of his total for the season. For the actual season. For a little while, it looked like Rice wasn't, wasn't going to be able to get to that homer total, and now he's pretty much destroyed it. With still four plus games to go. So Jim Rice, two run shot, puts the Red Sox on top three to nothing. So even if the Red Sox don't catch the Yankees, Jim Rice will have eclipsed his season, his season total for homers and possibly for RBIs. The Red Sox definitely would like to get to the postseason. That's the whole goal of the season. So we're not done yet. Still alive. See Yastrzemski up now. One down. Three runs in. And Yastrzemski is going to line a single up the middle. Red Sox fifth hit it today off Milcox. So one and one down. One on and one down for Fisk. Grounded out in his first at bat. He'll pop this one up to short. And Trammell calls for it and makes the catch. Stremsky heads back to first. Set up here, Freddie Lynch struck out in his first at bat. Draws the walk this time. So first and second with one with two down. Poor Chopson struck out in his first at bat. And we'll fly out to Kemp in left to end the inning. But the Red Sox put up a three spot highlighted by the two run homer by Jim Rice, is 49th of the season. RBI is 137 138. And the Red Sox have a 3 0 lead after three. And I just want to mention something uh, a lot yesterday. Um, we decided to go up to uh, Manchester, New Hampshire to see the um, New Hampshire Fisher Cats, which are the double A team of the Toronto Blue Jays. We've seen one other game there before. Um, got to see them play uh, the Harrisburg Senators, which of course are the uh, affiliates of the Washington Nationals. The Senators, the old 
moniker of the uh, Washington Senators. Anyway, but it was it was a great game. Um, we did get to see a home run by the home team, the Fisher Cats, and they ended up winning just two to nothing. Uh, there were a lot of strikeouts in the game. I think there were at least eight strikeouts by the home team. Uh, I'm not sure the exact total, but both teams, both pitchers pitched well. I think there were only eight hits in the actual game. Uh, eight or nine hits. That was it. But it was a nice game. Um, they had fireworks afterward, and uh, they also had a human cannonball, which was kind of kind of cool to see. I'd never seen one before. Well, live anyway. Uh, they shot a guy out of the cannon into a netting, so that was pretty cool. And it was also Star Wars night um, there, so uh, so that was pretty cool. A lot of people dressed up as Star Wars figures, and a lot of a lot of Star Wars references and stuff going on at the stadium. So that was pretty cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, that so was a good night. So anyway, all right, back to the action here. So Lou Whitaker up to the plate now. He'll lead it off for the Tigers here in the top of the. Fourth now, now down by three. Whitaker walked in his first at bat. And he'll walk again. So Tiant having trouble with the walks early on here. His second already. Brings a rusty stub. Popped up in his first at bat. And will not pop this one up as this one is going to go deep and out of here. So Staub hits his 24th home run, tying his season total, and pulls the Tigers to within one. So the walk came back to bite Tiant there, as it scored, and pulled the Tigers to within one. So Thompson up now, he could tie it with one swing of the bat. Can the Tigers go back to back? No, it's off the, oh, well, possibly. It's off the five column. And he'll line up to his counterpart, Scott, at first. We're out number one. So let's take a look at the scores here. Cleveland edging Baltimore 2-1. to one. Oh, the Yankees are in front of Toronto 3 to nothing. That's not good. Milwaukee is on top of California still 3-1. to one. And California's scratched across a run. So, uh, let's see here. Kansas City... Is now ahead of Seattle three to two. Minnesota is still in front of Texas three nothing. So Kemp up now with one out. The base is empty. Two runs already in on the two run homer by Legrand Orange. It's going to be out three call, and that will be a whistling liner to Scott for out number two. So May up now. May popped up in his first at bat, and he'll. Fly out to Rice and Wright. Circles under it and makes the catch. But Detroit cuts into the Boston lead with a two-run shot by Rusty Stubb. And it's now a 3-2 to two lead after 3.5. So Wilcox up to 61 pitches through three. Scott up to the plate now. Flew out in his first at bat. Grounds this one sharply to Rodriguez. Bounces off his chest, keeps it in front of him, over to first, and Scott is retired. So Groham up now, lined out in his first at bat. Pops this one to third. Rodriguez calls for it and makes the catch. So two up and two down for the Tigers here in the top, in the, uh, for the Red Sox in the bottom of the fourth. Brings up the top of the order, Burleson, one for two. Singled in his last at bat. And we'll ground this one to Rodriguez, so Rodriguez... Takes part in all three outs here. And after four full, it's 3-2 Boston. Tian's up 56 pitches through four innings. And Cochran up now. Flew out in his first at bat. That'll be a sharp single to left. So leadoff runner is on for the Tigers as Broham and Scott are going to play in on the grass, expecting Rodriguez to bunt. Looks like he's swinging away, though. Grounds this one to Remy. Bare hands it over to first. As Cochran moves in the scoring position now. So the tying run in scoring position with one down. 
Brings up Trammel. Flew out in his first at bat. Oh man, and that's going to be a liner to Burleson. So he had a 1 to 19 chance on the D20 split. 95% chance of getting a single and rolled to 20. So thankfully for that, as Cochran holds it second. Now with two down for the floor, it flew out and that most likely would have tied the game. And he'll pop this one up to Burleson. As Cochran is left stranded at second. So halfway through, it's Boston by one, three to two. So it'll be Remy, Rice, and Yastrzemski if anybody gets on Fisk up for the Red Sox here in the home half of the fifth. Rodriguez and Thompson in on the grass. Remy had an RBI double in his last step bat. Gets his second hit, a base hit, past the dive of Thompson, who was playing in on the grass. I'm going to try to steal with Remy here. I don't know, maybe we shouldn't deal with Rice up there. I think we're not going to. So Rice hit a two-run home run, his last at-bat. Has 49 home runs on the season, 138 RBIs. His next RBI will be the highest total for the season. Old Cox assumes the sign from May as the wind up in the pitch. Oh, this could be, it's off the, a good column for Wilcox. A couple home runs off of that, three or four split. And that is going to be another one to right set, center field. Going, going, and gone. So Jim Ed Rice. Second home run of the game, a two-run shot. 50th home run of the season, and... 140th RBI, 139 and 140. So he breaks his RBI total and hits 50 home runs on the same swing of the bat. So Jim Rice is on fire in this game. I think we didn't have Jerry Remy trying to steal a base there. That might have distracted Rice. So the fans going crazy here at Fenway as it's now a 5-2 lead. So Rice gets those two runs back. That Detroit scored in the top of the fourth. So Yastrzemski up now. One for two with a single. Can they go back to back? No. As Whitaker makes a nice snow cone play there. Robbie Yastrzemski have a single. So Fisk up now. Fisk go for two on the day so far. And he takes a call. Third strike for out number two. So we have Fred Lynn, who struck out in the second and walked in the third. And he'll line up to Whitaker in the sixth, in the fifth, sorry. So that'll do it for the Red Sox in the fifth, but Jim Ed Rice hits his second home run, number 50 on the season. And RBI is number 139-140 to give the Red Sox a 5-2 lead. So Mr. Brody is missing some excitement here. Purple Dinosaur is sink. I mean Purple Dinosaur. Purple Monkey is taking it all in there. He's pretty impressed with the Red Sox performance today so far. So Whitaker up to the plate now. He'll lead it off for the Tigers here in the top of the sixth. Rohammer and Scott in on the grass. He's walked twice against El Tiante so far today. And that one's going to be fouls it back way up on the upper deck. Back in the box. This one's hit the center. Deep center, Lynn's after it, racing hard, dives, and makes a nice catch. So a nice catch by Lynn Robs it. Whitaker, I mean, uh, yeah, Whitaker of extra bases. So one down now for LeGrand Durand, who home in his last at bat to put Detroit on the board. His 24th of the season. And it's going to be a range check on Burleson. Should handle this one, no, no issues. He'll get to it. And make the play over to the Boomer for out number two. So two outs in the base is empty for Jason Thompson. Grounded out in the first and lined out in the fourth. And we'll 
fly out in the sixth. And that'll do it for the Tigers in the top of the sixth. So after five and a half, it's Boston five and Detroit two. So it'll be Hobson, Scott, and Bohem in bottom third of the order against Wilcox still in there. 88 pitches now through five. And it's, that is going to be a fly ball to center. LaFleur drifts over under it and makes the easy out. Easy catch for the out. So let's check out the scores again. Yankees still lead Toronto 3 to nothing. Milwaukee still on top of California 3 to 1. And Kansas City still ahead of Seattle 4 to 3. Those are basically the only scores that mean anything. <laughs> so Scott up now. One one down. He's over two on the day. Looking for his first hit. And it won't happen now as it's a call third strike right down the middle. So two down now. But Brohammer is over two on the day. Grounds this one to Whitaker at second. Scoops it up. Fires the first. And the Red Sox go one, two, three in the sixth. So we head to the seventh with the Red Sox leading by three. Tiante back out there for the seventh. 83 pitches through six innings. Kemp, May, and Cochran up for the Bengals. And lines this one sharply to Remy. Makes the catch for out number one. And there's Mr. Brody coming back in. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brody's giving me the seventh, the uh, trivia question for the uh, seventh inning stretch. Okay. There he is. He's conferring with Purple Monkey there. Whispering this, the question there to him. Letting him know what, what it is. Except he's whispering it in the wrong end. <laughs> Mr. Brody. <laughs> All right. We're on camera, Mr. Brody. So Mr. Brody's happy to be back. There he is. All right. So Mr. Brody, happy. Oh, no, there he goes. <laughs> anyway. No, May up now. May over two on the day. Grounds this one to shortstop. Rooster has it. Nice play to get to that one. Fires the first. Route number two. Looks like he's going to get a drink of water now. Hopefully he'll be back. So two down now for Cochran. Cochran one for two. Singled in his last at bat. Tiant's only given up two hits on the day so far. One to Cochran and a two-run shot to Stubb. Oh, spoke too soon here. Oh, Co thank goodness Cochran has no power. Off of, on the pitcher's card. And that is just a sharp single instead of a home run. So two-out single for Cochran. Brings up Rodriguez. He's 0 for 2 on the day. And it's going to be a pinch hitter. Phil Mankowski is going to come to the plate for Rodriguez. Minkowski hitting 271 with 12 homers and 36 ribbies. Three times as many home runs as he did on the actual season and 16 more RBIs. Oh, Minkowski's going to get one to hit here. This one's going to go to right field. Rice going back. Seems to have any trouble picking it up. Stumbles, sticks up his glove, and makes the catch. Wow. Looks like he had a problem with the lights there, but is able to... Make the catch. Alright, so here's the trivia question brought to you by Mr. Brody, Miss Mags, and Purple Dinosaur. Name the first manager who won pennants in both leagues. Oh boy. Casey Stingle? <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I, I really don't know. All right, so lock in your answers. Here we go. 
Joe McCarthy with the Chicago Cubs one and the New York Yankees eight times. So nice question there by Mr. Brody. Miss Mags and Purple Monkey. So Detroit's having some defensive changes. Mankowski will bat eighth and play third. He came on the pinch hit for Rodriguez last inning. So Wilcox surprisingly still out there. From the bottom of the seventh. His next pitch will be his hundredth. At the top of the order for the Red Sox, Bros and Remy and Rice. Brosen one for three on the day. Grounds this one is kind of part trammel. Snares it easily over to first for and he's out by a step. So Remy up now. He's got a he's three for three on the day. He's got a cup an RBI double sandwiched between two signals. And looks like they're gonna get him for the first time as he lines out to Whitaker. The second out of the inning. So player of the game so far up to the plate now. He walked in the first and has a pair of two run homers, his 49th and 50th. Now with 140 runs batted in. Average is creeping up close to his totals for the actual season. Only three points behind that. See what Rice can do now against Wilcox. See if they're going to leave Wilcox in to face Rice. And surprisingly, they do. And this time, he's able to get him with a called third strike. And Rice did not like the call on that one. So attendance had just been announced here at Fenway, and it's uh, 32,040, so 32,040. And speaking of Fenway, while we were out running today, uh, we met a dog named Fenway. Yep, he started to run with me as I was running. So, <laughs> so cheers to Fenway there. Fenway the dog and Fenway the park. So the Tigers up now in the top of the eighth. Tiant's still out there. I'm going to let him stay probably another inning. There's action in the Red Sox pen. Trammell 0 for 2 on the day. Grounds this one to Burleson. Up with it over to Scott for out number one. The top of the order of the floor. He's flown out twice and popped out. Finally gets one to hit here. He's going to hit line this one sharply to the left. So the floor is on the first time today. So Whitaker up now. Whitaker's walked a couple of times. 0 for 1 officially. Whitaker trying to get a lead. Can't get a very good one. And Whitaker's going to get a pitch date here. And Whitaker is going to foul it off the screen. Comes the next pitch. And this one is going, going, and gone. So the light-hitting Lou Whitaker hits home run number two, both home runs against the Red Sox. The last one was in the series, I believe it was in Detroit. And now he's got one here at Fenway and pulls the Tigers to within one. So 5-4 now as there is action in the Red Sox pen as there's some well, quite a bit of stretching and some throwing started. So the Grand Orange in there now. He's already got a two-run home run today. One for three. Oh, my goodness. And he goes deep and ties the game at five. So the Grand Orange with the second home run. Matching Rice's two home runs for the day. Ties the game at five. So just like that, Detroit has put up a three spot, and the game is tied. So Fisk goes out to talk to Tion, tries to buy some time for the bullpen. And looks like Zimmer's coming out now. And that is going to be it for El Tiante. So Tiante cannot get through the eighth. Surrenders three runs to tie the game. Whoops. And he's going to bring in Tom Bergmeier. So Bergmeier will come in to relieve Tiant to try to get the final two outs of the eighth here. New ball game now. So Thompson up to the plate now. Scott and Broham are guarding the lines. Grounds this one, thankfully, to Broham at third and not Hobson. 
gets to it and makes the play over to Scott for out number two. So Steve Kemp up now. Kemp 0 for 3. Kemp with 23 home runs on the season. And he strikes out swinging. So Bergmeier comes in and gets the two batters he faces. But damage is done as Rusty Staub hits a two-run homer. And who was the other guy? And Lou Whitaker with his second home run. Just the second home run of the season. A two-run shot. And just like that, the Tigers have tied the game at five. So the Red Sox desperately need to stay, stay, oh my goodness, oh, look at the Kansas City score, uh, oh my goodness, the Yankees score is just as bad, the Yankees are leading the Blue Jays now 9 nothing. so Red Sox need to win today, oh boy, <laughs> Fenway fans nervous here now, so Wilcox still out there, that's the good news. 115 pitches through seven. Stremski, Fisk, and Lynn. Come on, Yaz. And this one's going to be a fly ball at the center. LaFleur gets to it. And hauls it in for out number one. So it's up to the Red Sox bullpen to hold it. To keep the score at the Tigers at five. Red Sox need to scratch across a run here. So Fisk up now. Fisk 0 for 3 on the day. He's dead 0 for 4 as he grounds out to Mankowski for the second out of the eighth. Fred Lynn could be the hero. 0 for 2 with a walk. There is a home run on that column. He does not find it as he flies out to Cochran third and final out of the eighth so we head to the ninth with the score tied at five and it's, yeah we're gonna leave Bergmeier in there at least yeah all lefties coming up so Bergmeier will stay in there for the meantime Milt May over three on the day grounds this one to Scott grabs it races the first and beats May for the out so one down for the Tigers here in the ninth Brings up Cochran. He's got a pair of singles on the day, two for three. And that'll be a range check on Burleson. Should get to this one. Get does get to it. And he's able to retire Cochran for the second out of the inning. So Mankowski up now. Mankowski flew out in his first at bat. Grounds this one to Burleson. So that'll do it as the Tigers go 1, 2, 3 in the ninth. So the Red Sox can win it here with a, with a single run here. It'll be Hobson, Scott, and Brohammer, bottom third of the order against Wilcox. See if they can. Mankowski, Thompson guarding the lines. Hobson 0 for 3 on the day. Oh, and strikes out. Just missed getting that single there. Possibly on the sixth split. On the sixth roll. And final scores here. Yep. New York Yankees win nine to one. Catfish Hunter goes to ten and seven. And Milwaukee lost six to five, so that pretty much just about eliminates Milwaukee. So the boomer, he could win it with one swing of the bat. 0 for three on the day. Well, wanted that five column, got the six one. Grounds this one to Thompson for out number two. So Jack Brohammer up now with two down. Brohammer 0 for 3 on the day. Brohammer with a chance here. Come on, Brohammer. Could he get his first home run of the season? No, but he will line a single to keep the inning going. So Brohammer keeps that inning going here. Brings up Burleson, who's one for four on the day. And Burleson with a chance here. It's going to be off the two column. Come on, six. 
Oh, and he lines out to Mankowski to end the inning. Got one to hit there and just misses it. Oh, my goodness. And that, okay, we're going to take out a couple of righties coming up now. So that is going to be it for Bergmeier. He did a wonderful job retiring all five batters he faced. Okay. Oh boy, let's see here. Righty's coming up. Guess we're going to bring in Drago. He's our best bet against righties. Need to win this one to keep the season alive. So. Trammel 0 for 3 up now. Drago 8 and 8 in the season with 9 saves. 2.36 earned run average, 80 innings pitched, 71 hits allowed, 25 walks, 51 strikeouts, and has surrendered six homers. So Trammell up to the plate now. Drago looks in for the sign from Fisk. Nods his head, kicks and delivers. Oh, that's going to be a sharp single. Not a good start to the inning for the Red Sox. So Brohammer and Scott in on the grass, expecting LaFour to drop one down. Four one for four on the day. Oh my goodness. Gets one to hit here. And that's going to be a base hit to right. Oh, Trammel moves all the way to third. So runners at the corners. Red Sox got to bring the infield in now with Whitaker. Who's one for two today with a couple of walks and a damage in the last inning with a two-run homer. Oh boy. And that is going to be it for... Drago, as we had a bunch of lefties coming up now. So we're going to have to oops, use our other lefty. Oh, we're not going to bring in Sproul. Andy Hassler. So Hassler's going to come in to relieve Drago. So Drago can't get the job done. So Hassler comes in with a 4 and 3 record and one save, 4.66 earned run average. There's Mr. Brody back. Trying to cheer the Red Sox on to victory here. 77 innings pitch, 105 hits allowed. Ouch, that's awful. 31 walks and 31 strikeouts. I'll let Mr. Brody get his comfortable in his co-host seat here. Mr. Brody can't even watch here. <laughs> Keeps doing the spin. Mr. Brody's all nerved out there. Yep. Oh, what's he doing now? Mr. Brody, what are you doing? Mr. Brody is attacking his seat here. I don't know what he is doing. Are you okay, Mr. Brody there? <laughs> I don't know what he is doing. You okay, Mr. Brody? Okay. Let's get ready here. Alright, so Mr. Brody. <laughs> Woo! He's attacking his seat there. Ready? Let's go. All right. So Hassler looks in for the sign from Fisk. Bro Hammer and Scott in on the grass. Burleson and Remy also playing in. And LaFleur is going to try to steal. Safe chance 1-20. to 20, So, yeah, we're not going to even try that. Hold on to the ball. Oh my goodness, so LaFleur steals. Oh boy. Oh boy, we can't really... Stobbs hit two home runs today. <laughs> oh boy. I think we got it. We got to put Whitaker on. We got to put Whitaker on with nobody out. Alright, so we're going to... We're going to intentionally walk Whitaker. All right, so the Grand Garage already with two home runs today. Chance to be the hero here. Hassel looks in for the sign, looks at the runners. Fans are nervous here at Fenway. Season could be in the balance right here. Oh, my God. And Staub's going to get one to hit here. Come on, double play. Oh, it's going to be the double play. Rohammer grabs it, throws home, nails him. 
and goes to the first. So Brohammer starts a 5-2-3 double play. Woo, possibly saving the Red Sox season. So thankfully that was not Hobson at third. Who knows what would have happened with that. That nah, would have been the same thing because it's <laughs> off the card there. <laughs> but anyway. Oh boy, Jason Thompson up now. Or Steve Kemp. We're going to pitch to Thompson here. Thompson 0 for 4 on the day. Hassel needs to get this out here. Go ahead, run, and at third. Hassel looks in for the sign. Nods his head. Looks at the run. It's Fenway fan, fans nervous here. Can't look. Oh! And it's going to be a foul out. Fisk running after it. Near the stands. Can he get to it? And he gets it. So, woo! So Hassler gets out of the bases loaded jam with nobody out. And the Red Sox are still alive. Well, they would have been alive anyway, but... So the Red Sox can win it now. Fans all excited now. Hopefully that will motivate the Red Sox here. Remy, Rice, and Yastrzemski. Remy 3 for 4 on the day with a double. And a run knocked in. Wilcox, Wilcox still out there with 136 pitches. Wow. Oh. And that's a good call for Remy. Come on, Remy. It's going to be hit back to the pitcher. Corners are playing in. Oh, and he gets the single off of it. Wow, Wilcox with great range. Above average range. Cannot get to this one. And that is going to fall in there for a single. For a uh, single for Remy. An infield single off the pitcher's glove. So Jim Rice with a chance now. And Jim Rice is definitely not going to bunt. Oh, boy. I'd like to have Remy try to steal here, though. Try to get in the scoring position. We're going to do it. So Remy is going to try to steal here. What do we get? 70% chance? Oh, boy. Let's see if he gets the lead. We're going to try it. Unable to get the lead. Okay. Nope. So we're not going to attempt it. So Jim Rice, two for three with a pair of two-run homers. Chance to be the hero here. And it's going to be off the sixth column. And that's going to be a fly ball to left, and Kemp is there to make the catch. Oh, boy. So one down now. Remy's still at first. Let's see if he... See, I have a feeling I know if I hit the steal thing again, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, that should change. It shouldn't be the same for every time. That's one thing I don't like about the stealing with Stratomatic. Is it would have automatically came up on this because it came up on it before. So we're not going to try it. Strems keep ready to grip and rip. And Yastrzemski delivers a single to left. Oh, boy. No, we can't. I'm going to hold him at second. So one down now. Chance for Fist to be the hero with a single. Fans on their feet. Cheering. Rally caps on. Fisk 0 for 4 on the day. Are they going to leave Wilcox in there? They are. Fisk with a chance. Come on, 6. Fisk hits this one to left, and Kemp is there to make the catch for out number two. So Fred Lynn with a chance to be the hero. Lynn 0 for, 0 for 3 on the day with a walk. And he draws the walk, keeping the inning going. So the winning run now at third. Base is loaded for Butch Hobson. Who do we have on the bench? Dwight Evans. Hobson 0 for 4. I think we're going to lift him for Dwight Evans. He's a DH today, so it won't hurt us. Nope. Keep hitting that. Ah, yeah, so Dwight Evans is going to come in. Let's see. Dwight Evans is 1L. What's Hobson? Hobson is 3R. Let's take a look at Evans' card. Against righties. He's got a couple of walks. He does have a home run, a triple. He's got a couple of good seven ones there. He's got a, oh boy, what's Hobson got on his card? 
Hobson's got a bunch of good stuff there. Nice. He's got three singles, though, on the sevens. I think we got to leave Hobson in. He's got three singles on the sevens. That's the most frequent chance to roll it. We're going we're gonna to keep Hobson in there. Zimmer has faith in him. Come on, Hobson. Bases loaded, two down, bottom of the 10th. And that's going to be it for Wilcox. So John Hiller is going to come in. 4-3 and three record, 1.91 earned run average. 13 saves. 57 innings pitched, 36 hits allowed. He's been a force this season for the Tigers. 27 walks, 49 strikeouts. Four home runs surrendered, though. Hiller is a lefty, so let's see now. Hobson's still got a couple of strong singles there and a home run possibility. We're still going to leave Hobson in, though. If anything, it may, looks, looks a little bit better now for Hobson. Let's see. Let's look at Evans' card now against lefties. Got to do it. So Evans against lefties. Still doesn't. Oh, he's got a double there. A double and a single. Oh boy. Let's compare things here. Can't. So Evans. Oh boy. He's got single one to nine. So he's got a half fifty percent chance just about getting a single off of one, one seven. He's got a 100% chance on 3-7. 2-7 is an out. Look at Hobson now. Hobson is a a walk, which is still just as good. He's got a strong single there, almost like 80% 80, 80 chance there. And 100% chance there. Oh, boy. And let's look at Wilcox against lefties and righties. So Wilcox against righties. Seven column is, we'll get it done. Uh, let's look at Wilcox against, sorry, Hiller, I mean. Hiller against righties. About the same thing. So I think we're going to, we're going to keep Hobson in. Hobson's still our best bet. So Hill looks in for the sign from May. Runners get their lead off the bases. Fenway fans nervous here. Hill looks in for the sign from May. Nods his head. Looks at the runners. Kicks and delivers. And it's going to be off Hobson's column. And it's, he gets a pitch date here. Let's see what he does with it. Oh my goodness. He grounds out. No. Oh, there's so many other hits on there. And Hobson unable to, as he grounds out the third. Fans cannot believe it. So I head to the top of the 11th here. With Hassler back out on the hill. You got to leave Hassler on the lefty. Steve Kemp, he could put the Tigers head one swing of the bat. 23 home runs on the season. Hass looks in for the sign from Fizz. He has to wind up in the pitch. Fly ball to right. Carrying. Rice is under it though and makes the grab. I like to take out Rice and put Evans in there, but I don't really want to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Kemp up now, 0 for 4 on the day. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Milt May up now, 0 for 4 on the day. Grounds this one to Burleson. Should make the play. Ooh, I thought that was going to be an error. So two up and two down for the Tigers in the 11th. Red Sox need to win this one. Cochran up now. Cochran two for four on the day. Oh my goodness. And that's going to be a single up to middles. So that'll bring up Mankowski. Mankowski 0 for 2 since coming in. Scott holding on Cochran at first. Steve Dillard's going to come in to pinch run the ex-Red Sox. 
Oh my goodness, not the one cone we didn't want. And that's a base hit up the middle. Oh my goodness, Trammel up now. Oh, I gotta take out Hassel, he's absolutely horrible on that two column there. So that is gonna be it for Hassler. Cannot get through the 11th here. Red Sox need to win this one. Oh boy. Stanley looks like he's, oh, Red Sox. Oh man. Should I dare bring in Wright? Oh my goodness. Bill Campbell. Stanley's, oh, not good. Oh boy, what's Campbell look like against righties? Oh, too many hits off righties there. How about Bill Lee? You know, I think Bill Lee, we're going to bring in. Bill Lee's the man to bring in. Even against righties. So Bill Lee's going to come in for Hassler. I think that's what he was used in September was out of the bullpen because I know he didn't start as it started. So Bill Lee comes in now. Oh boy. First and second, two down. Trammel up now. One for four. Got a single off Drago. His last time up. Lee looks in for the sign. Just no Ephus pitch, please. Oh, and he gets the right column. Come on. Oh, and thankfully Bro Hammer is in there. Come on, Bro Hammer. You can do it. No, oh, down, down. Yes, Brohammer gets to it. Come on, Brohammer. Come on, Jack. And makes the play. Woo! So the Red Sox dodge another bullet there. Whew! So ahead to the bottom of the 11th. It's going to be Scott, Brohammer, and Burleson. Scott 0 for 4 on the day. Scott's going to get one to hit here. He gets it off the three column. And that's going to be a solid base hit to left. Oh, Scott with an 11th. Should we do we pinch run? Could move Yastrzemski in to first. And we could put Evans in the out outfield. Then we lose the... No, we wouldn't lose the DH. Oh, boy. Could, can we bring in Evans to pinch run? No, I don't think we want that. I think we want to bring in... We want to bring in our fastest runner because Evans isn't that much faster. Evans... Yeah, he is actually 1-14. to 14. But I would like to have Evans possibly pinch hit bat later on. Oh boy. Well, I want to bring in Hancock to pinch run for now, just in case. Because Hancock is a 14 too, right? Yeah. So we're going to bring in Hancock and figure it out after that. we got to get to that point now. So he's going to come in for Scott. So the Boomer's Day is done. Goes off to a cheer. Oops. Do this right. All right, so Hancock on now. A bit more speed than the aging veteran Scott. Second stint with the Red Sox. So Brohammer. Oh, Brohammer. We got a bunt with Brohammer. Yeah, Brohammer is going to be called upon the bunt here. Especially against the lefty and lefty here. Brohammer is not good against the lefties. Yeah, he's pretty bad, as you can see. Got a much better chance of getting a bunt down. So we're going to have a bunt. So Jack's going to be called upon the bunt. Minkowski and Thompson in on the grass expecting the bunt. Here's the pitch. Gets the bunt down. Hiller picks it up over to first. So nice bunt by Brohammer. As Hancock moves in the scoring position, representing the winning run. So the Rooster the chance to be the hero. One for five with a run scored. A single back in the third. Come on, Rooster. So 
Hill looks in for the sign, looks back at the runner, kicks and delivers. And he draws the walk. So Furnas on first and second. Burleson's run means nothing. So Jerry Remy up now. Remy's had a good day. He's got four for five with three singles and an RBI double. Come on, Remy, keep it going. Oh, and Remy, that's a good thing for Remy off the four column. And he draws a walk to load the bases. So now the winning run just 90 feet away. And the man of the hour, the man of the day, Jim Ed Rice for the Red Sox. He's got a pair of two-run homers. All we need is a single now. A single or a walk. Come on, Rice, you can do it. Red Sox with the bases loaded, one down. Fans on their, fans on the edge of their seat, most of them standing. Can be the Red Sox season in the balance here. Wilcox looks in for the sign from May. Comes to the set position. Looks at the runners. Kicks and fires. <gasps> and it's off the four call. And that's going to be a base hit up the middle. And the Red Sox win. Jim Rice comes through with a game winning single. And the Red Sox fans are going crazy as they flood the field. Rice gets swamped as he as they play as he rounds first base and make sure he gets the first base first. And the Red Sox hold on to win six to five in eleven. So Red Sox are not dead yet. Wow, what a game, Mister Brody! What a game, huh? <laughs> Mister Brody says he knew the Red Sox were going to win all the way. That's why he was doing his attacking, attacking his seat there, trying to get the fans and the Red Sox and the team behind him. That was the rally cry by Mr. Brody there. So let's look at the box score here. Wow, what an exciting game that was. So 6-5 to five as they win in 11th. And fittingly, Jim Rice gets the game-winning RBI. Should have had the game-winning home run back in the, back in the uh, I don't know back, back his first home run should have been there. They were up three to nothing there. Actually, one of his home runs anyway should have been the game winner, but it wasn't. It was a single in the eleventh. Wow! So a masterful job by Don Zimmer and the Red Sox to pull that one out. So. El Teante goes seven and a third innings. Pitches allow six hits, five runs, all of them earned. Two walks and no strikeouts. No strikeouts. Wow, on the day. Surrendered three home runs. So Tom Bergmeier did his job. One and two thirds innings. Retiring all five batters he faced. Striking out one. Dick Drago had a rough day. Hanko didn't cost her, allowed two hits and the two batters he faced. Andy Hasser came in, pitched an inning and two-thirds, allowing two hits, one walk. But was able to get out of the uh, the inning that Drago started. The tenth there, I believe. Bill Lee gets the win, five and nine. Bill Lee pitches a third of an inning, gets, gets his man. Pitches two pitches, but that's all he needed. So Milt Wilcox pitches nine and two thirds innings, allows ten hits, five runs, all of them earned, three walks and seven strikeouts, surrendered two home runs, both to Jim Rice. John Hiller tagged with a loss, four and four, two thirds of innings, two hits allowed, one run. It was earned, two walks. The Red Sox batters now. Brooke Burleson, the shortstop, one for five with a run scored. Jerry Remy, an excellent day, four for five with three singles and an RBI double, two runs scored. Jim Rice, player of the game, three for five with two three-run homers, two runs scored, and five RBIs on the day. Yastrzemski was two for five. Fisk, 0 for five. Lynn, 0 for three. Hobson, 0 for five. Uh, let's see here. Scott, one for five. Hancock, pinch runner, scores the winning run. 
came in and pinch run for Scott. And Scott also got that inning started with a single. And then there were a couple of walks after that. So all in all, a good team effort there. And finally, Jack Rohammer won for four. So let's take a look at the standings. Unfortunately, we know the Yankees won. So the Red Sox are still going to be, unfortunately, two games behind. Ooh, that's not the one we wanted. There we go. So the Yankees' magic number is now three with four games to go. Ouch. The Yankees really need to Start a nice losing streak, and the Red Sox need to continue their winning streak. The Red Sox now won six in a row. Unfortunately, the Yankees, well, the Yankees, actually, yeah, they've only won one in a row. They did lose their last game, to pull, so the Red Sox are able to pull within two. Um, Kansas City's magic number is now nine, as they, one, sorry, one, as they have won three in a row, and California has won six in a row, but... As long as Kansas City wins, they control their own destiny. So they did, they just need one more win. And they have three more games left to play. So they just need one win out of those three to move on. Or Kansas or California lost. And California has four games to go. So the Yankees down to their last four games also. Milwaukee definitely out of it now. Six and a half games behind. Still overperforming for the season, but no longer a factor. It's just a two-team race now. And the Yankees are getting close to the finish line, unfortunately. They need the Yankees to stumble now. Come on. Let's see who each team is playing next. So I think that should finish the series for the Red Sox. So they will be at home. Oh, actually, no. They have one more game left against the Tigers. Ooh, in a game that they actually won in reality one nothing. It's gonna be Mike Torres against Kip Young. Never heard of Kip Young. Let's take a look at Kip Young. Kip Young only lasted two years, seventy eight and seventy nine. Seventy eight he was six and seven. Seventy nine he was two and two. He had a good year. Wow, he had a good ERA in '78. He was 2.81 earned run average, but was a six and seven record. In 14, 13 games started, 14 games total. In '79, he pitched. Two, it was two and two with, but with a 6.39 ERA, and that was it. That was his major league experience there. So hopefully the Red Sox can continue their winning streak, and hopefully the Yankees will get a loss. Let's check and see who they. Yankees are up to play next. So the Yankees, oh, they're at the Blue Jays again. So the Blue Jays, we need we need a big things from the Blue Jays there. The Yankees only won this game three to one. It was Ron oh Ron Guidry's on the hill though. So we need a miracle now. We need we need the Blue Jays to be able to beat Ron Guidry. <laughs> the Blue Jays have Bale or Moore. He was six and nine with a four point nine three earned run average on the season. Ouch. Alright, so we need a miracle here. We definitely need the Blue Jays to win. And the Red Sox to Well, Steve Palermo was the home plate umpire in the Yankees game. And Don Deckinger and Larry McCoy and Dave Phillips. Those are some names there. Let's see what the Red Sox have uh umpiring and Hopefully it's not uh what's his name from uh from the World Series there? <laughs> Larry, Larry Larry Barnett. Let's check and see where the umpire is in Thursday's Red Sox game. Jim Evans. Oh, that's good. Jim Evans is to be the home plate umpire. Derwood Merrill, the first base. Marty Springstead, the second base, and Rich Garcia, the third base umpire so things are heating up here don't miss a game here mr brody is back and we're ready to we're gonna try to finish up this series this week definitely four more games left to go we'll probably do a game one night one game a night for the next four days 
until we hopefully the Red Sox can take it down to the wire and hopefully come up with a victory. Who knows? We may even have a one game playoff possibly. It's still a possibility. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming. My co-host, Mr. Brody, is back. And Mr. Brody has kicked Purple Monkey out of the co-host seat and he wants it all to himself now. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll see you in game number 159 with the Red Sox going against the Tigers and try to get a little bit closer and pray for a miracle with the Yankees. Hopefully the Yankees will lose. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.